Hi guys, Tony here. Today I'm going to be talking with Tony Huge about all the healing benefits of BPC-157 and TB500. I'll be doing even more content on BPC-157, it being an oral compound, it's very easy to take, but has all these healing benefits for joints, your gut, wound healing, um, neuroprotective it is, and even for, it has some antidepressant benefits too. It can even accentuate your body's natural ability to uh, produce growth hormone too. Over the years, you, you must have uh, tried especially in a combination if you tried tb500 and bpc157 yeah i use them for healing recovery uh if i get any kind of an injury or something um like just as an example i i pulled something on the outside of my knee one of these little tendons and it's mild but i could tell that it it's the type of injury that should probably benefit from these type of things like a joint like a tendons and ligaments type type injury that I've used this before on clients to recover them. So, so then I always have them on hand and I use them as soon as I get any kind of injury or an old injury starts acting up. But I also, every once in a while, I just take them for like anti-aging longevity just to, because, you know, you're aware that there's some injury, you feel some pain, but there's probably a lot of things in our body that aren't fully recovering that could use like a boost in, in recovery. And also as we get older, um, our circulation gets worse. Mm -hmm. And these have been shown to increase circulation significantly. Like for example, if someone gets a heart attack or a stroke and then they're treated with these things, they seem to not suffer as much damage from the heart attack or a stroke because it it very quickly increases the vasculature and, and blood flow to everything. So I take them almost as like a preventative thing from time to time, but I use BPC-157 a lot more than TB-500 because BPC-157, I can use an oral form. Right, I can just right. take pills and it's just so convenient. And then also <clears throat> I have, I'm gluten sensitive and anytime I eat wheat, which that's my addiction. So <laughs> I like cookies and cake oh, and yeah. brownies pancakes so like i i say okay i should not eat the wheat but oh i just want it so bad i'm gonna eat it i'm gonna wreck myself kind of like someone who says they're never gonna drink alcohol but then on the weekend they go out and binge drink and vomit and then the next day they feel terrible and they're like i'm never gonna drink again and then next week they do it again i'm like that with wheat I wreck my digestive system and then i use the bpc 157 to repair my digestive system probably shouldn't put the stress on my body, but that's how I know how insanely effective BPC-157 is because it instantly heals my digestive system. Whereas normally if I eat wheat, my digestive system is wrecked for three days. I feel bloated. I feel acid reflux and pain. And with the BPC-157 in 24 hours, so three times faster healing, my gut's repaired. Wow. And that's off 500 micrograms oral two times per day so like by the time i take the third pill my digestive system is recovered so it's very orally bioavailable it definitely works there's no question i go through this same experiment every week unfortunately <laughs> yeah yeah i haven't tried it for that i mean i'm not gluten intolerant but yeah for injuries and things like that i mean i'm not doing it 500 micrograms i just do it once a day so maybe yeah next time I'll just do it morning and evening, but uh, yeah, I'm the same as you. I do BPC more often than TB 500, but I, I did do, when I did a, interesting, I did a biological age test and it was right. I was off my TRT for six weeks. So I had a lot of inflammation where I was training exactly the same with my hormones crashed and nothing. And then yeah. my body was super inflamed. And then I used them both for that. And it's, they seemed to, yeah, they worked kind of synergistically. Yeah. My, my only concern with, using them is like what if what if it does uh accelerate cancer growth or something like that but i'm not i'm not super it, it's a concern but it's a very small concern because i'll just go get my lab work done once in a long while and and check for cancer markers and blood tests and don't see any evidence of cancer um but you know I use growth hormone and IGF sometimes. So these are already things that, and, and I eat a lot of protein frequently, which activates mTOR frequently. So like I'm creating a perfect storm for cancer, 
but I don't have cancer and I have no evidence of cancer, but like by adding the BBC 157 and TB 500, I'm increasing blood flow everywhere right. in the body. If I did have a tumor, tumor, I would also be increasing blood flow to the tumor. That's the only reason I can imagine not to be using these things. But even if cancer was a risk, I would still use these things during a time of injury. The real question is, do I use them for like maintenance or do I use them for anti-aging? And then that's where I balance like the small, tiny risk of potentially building cancer versus the tremendous benefit of healing and recovering and rejuvenating everything in my body. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, because what you're saying, like angiogenesis, where you've got increased blood flow to an area, but say if you've got inflammation, then it will go to heal something rather than the cancer. But as yeah, as you're saying, if you're activating mTOR and all these pathways that could be pro-cancer then adding something else but then um th that's where it all gets down towards the the dosage and a uh, guy I had on uh, the e peptide expert you know John Sfor Tremblay he was talking about um you know certain things that cer a certain dose can actually be anti-cancer and then when you go up in dose that's where it becomes pro-cancer and so that could be yeah. dose, could be dose or frequency or something like that but that's what I wonder. And he was talking about the combination of BPC with TB500 and yeah. saying when someone's got like some kind of illness, but they can't, can't work out what it is. And when yeah. they do the combination, he says like nine out of 10 times, even if they never actually identify what the problem was, it can actually have a healing benefit for that, that illness. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why you like, we probably have illnesses in our body. We're not even aware of. So that's why every once in a while, I just take them just to fix things. I'm not mm. even potentially aware of just to be healthy and for preventative purposes. Uh, but the, but the TB 500 has to be injected, but I just included in my, you know, I, I, I load up in one syringe, like my HMG, my HCG, maybe some HGH uh, at night, and then I'll put in some TB 500, for example, and I'll do that every once in a while, just to, for health and longevity, even if okay. there's no injury. Yeah. Mm. And then, so with BPC, what you do is short cycles, because I know you can go up to a month for that. But you tend to yeah, I just, or... well, this, this trip, actually this trip, I'm taking one pill every day. Cause I'm just, I'm thinking um, I'm eating different foods, I'm traveling, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I want to just get my inflammation really low. I'm gonna all I'm gonna always have inflammation when I'm actually weightlifting and eating a lot of food and living my high stress lifestyle. But I thought, you know what, I have the opportunity to get my inflammation really low. And so this trip, I'm using BPC 157. Because because you want to decrease inflammation, but if you do any one pathway too much, then it's not good. So for example, like you can decrease inflammation with ibuprofen, but it's not good to take a lot of ibuprofen. No. It's not good to take <laughs> it all the time, but once in a while can be good. So it's like, okay, I'll use a little ibuprofen once in a while to bring inflammation down. I'll use some BPC-157 to bring inflammation down. I'll use some other supplements that uh, my supplement box to bring inflammation down. So everybody's a, in the health community is talking about inflammation, inflammation, but they're right. never really talking specifically like the most effective things for reducing right. inflammation or, you know, so I, I, I actually have like, this is part of my inflammation reduction protocol and something I wish I would have started much. I wish I would have started taking TB 500 and BPC 157 when I was 18, you know, to, to prevent aging in the first place, to prevent inflammation causing aging and, and problems later. So yeah, I use it. That's another reason I use them for ongoing maintenance, just overall inflammation reduction through another yeah, pathway. Yeah. I think there's like multiple pathways as you're saying. And then that, that was something that's really driving my aging at the moment is inflammation like my c-reactive protein and my il6 or interleutin 6 people watching is is actually really that was particularly high the il6 and so mm -hmm. it's just trying to obviously you know you want to do it from multiple pathways you're saying you know like work out what's causing inflammation obviously if you yeah, if you're a bodybuilder things like that or the kind of foods you eat so it's trying to work out what's causing that but then obviously to having things that reduce the inflammation simultaneously yeah and and they and they do work they both decrease inflammation but they both work slightly differently like the bpc 157 is a little bit better at um promoting like the blood flow the angiogenesis and the tb 500 works a little bit more on the cellular level 
And so when combination, they're synergistic together. On the other hand, sometimes people just use one or the other. And if I just had to choose one, I just, I choose BPC-157 just right. because it's oral. Cool, yeah. But I, like I said, I still use the TB-500 in, in my, you know, injection stack, anti-aging stack. Mm, yeah, I've been getting a lot of people commenting about BPC, saying make content on it because it's even got like mood boosting properties and it can even enhance um, your secretion of HGH, I believe. Ah, oh, very nice. Okay, good. Some secondary benefits. Mm. Yeah, and and I use MK677, so that causes my body to produce more growth hormone. And if there's some limiting factor that's preventing me from producing even more, then maybe the BPC157 is helping with that limiting factor. So the MK677 could produce even more growth hormone. Yeah, that would yeah. be also an interesting protocol yeah, yeah. to develop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you think. And then if you were, say, trying to be conservative with your dose of MK677, then you could be, that's a good kind of like way of keeping the dose down and then having the BPC simultaneously, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And then as I'm getting older, uh, I know that from watching other people age, like blood flow does become an issue. So if I can increase my blood flow and then I get more blood flow to my muscles, my brain, everything else. So that's another reason I use the BBC 157 and TB 500, but mostly BBC 157 is just for keeping my blood flow youthful. Yeah. 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 Cause there's that guy, you know, Gary Brecker, you know, the guy that transformed Dana White. Yeah, and then he, yeah. He's always saying, um, <laughs> You know, the presence of oxygen is the absence of disease. So, so yeah, if you've got good blood flow going everywhere, then and that's obviously the definition of death is hypoxia to the brain. So the more, the better your blood flow, the better oxygen you're getting to everywhere, then that kind of keeps you young. Yes, yes. And counterbalanced with what keeps coming up is like the, the deprivation of oxygen for a very short period mm. of time then is very, very healthy. But it's like, it's like we want to have a very short period of time of depriving oxygen. And then like 98% of the time we want to have more oxygen. That's it, yeah. So that that probably confuses people a lot. That's probably worth its own video. Like mm. hypoxia, good or bad, oxygen, good or bad. Hi guys, to help out the channel, do you think about investing in your health and buying one of these tests I have available? And yes, I'm sure a lot of viewers do like to invest in supplements, but not so many into diagnostics. And it's a bit like a Formula One team buying modifications for their car and having no data to see how it's working. Check out these short videos again, overview of all the data that you'll be getting.